But once I have this set now, I can start thinking about my HTML, my CSS a little bit better. Now, with some of these names that I'm using to lay out the page, some of those are going to be used as tabs, and some of those will be used, will actually be divs. So this, um, this word main here does not have an actual name as a tab. So what I can actually do is say, um, this is a div, and the class equals main. So you can start to actually put the actual code in the wireframe. And that's something that you won't see a lot, but I think as you're starting to design things, I think it helps you understand the translation of code, of image to code, basically. So you're thinking visually, but then you're thinking um, in terms of what the code should be as well. And that is like an added thing to do. Like I said, you're not, you're not seeing that often, and maybe you don't show the client the wireframe at this stage, but I think as a designer, it's really helpful. Because now I can start to think about my code of brackets. So the first thing I have now is a header, so I'm going to create a header tab. So there actually is a header tab in um, HTML, so I can use this. Now inside of the header tag, I have nav bar. So I'm going to nest I'm going to nest the nav bar and there oh. So in, um, from a tag standpoint, there isn't a nav bar tag, but there is a nav tag. So I can use nav. And that is semantic. So again, it means the name represents the type of content that's going to appear on the web page. That's your semantic markup. So I have a nav in a header, just like I have right here on the wireframe. And then next on the page, I have my aside. So an aside is an actual tag. Next to the aside, what would come, what would come next? After I have that aside, what would be the next tag I would want based on that wireframe? Main. What? Main. Yeah, um, main. But what would be the actual tag? Div. A div. Yeah, the only reason why um, I'm using a div is because there is no main tag. So I could use a class though. And this will actually start to tell me in my style sheet what class I should be using. And I can apply that right now. I can say the class equals me. So here I am still thinking about my wireframe and ensuring that I'm using classes that represent the type of content that's appearing on the page. And now within that name, what I have are images. So I'm going to actually for the images, I'm going to use divs as well. I'm not going to use an image tag. And I'm going to give each one a class. So I'll have image one image two and image three. So I'm just going to kind of paste this. I have an aside. I have next to these aside a div with the class of name. And inside the div I have three more divs, image one, two, and three. Then I have my footer. So this is basically the HTML that is being used for this wireframe. This is how the wireframe is being represented in HTML. And next, now uh, what I can do is start to create classes for these various tags and these divs that will reflect the sizes that I'm using on the wireframe itself. So in my style tag, I'm going to start to think about what I'm doing here. And so, you know, my header. And I can, um, for these tags, I'm using the element tag, meaning I'm just using the name of the tag. Or you can create a class. But for now, I'm just using the actual name of the tag. So I have a width. I already know what my width is. That's 1266, because I wrote it right in the wireframe. It's 
and then I know what my height is, and that's 116. And then um, what I'll probably do is give it a color so I actually can see it. So I'll use a background color. I'll use um, dark gray. So I have my header set up. And then inside my header, I have a nav bar. So I'll go, it's called nav. So I have my nav here. I'm just gonna copy and paste this. Um, my nav bar is nested within the header. So if my header is 1266, I can center it by giving it a smaller width. So let's say I'll make it 1246. I'm guessing on the height, but I would use the height that I wrote on the wireframe. So maybe it has a height of 30. And then I'll give it a margin of 10 pixels. And then next I will create my aside. So the width is 232. And the height is 399. Same color as my header, so I'm going to just make that gray. 
So now I can see the nav bar. Actually, I'll make it a uh, more obvious color. I'll make it a uh, line. line. So now I can see my nav bar inside my header. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to get these images. I have these images here, but they're all grouped together. So I want the images to be within the actual main section. So I'll apply a float to the images. I'll say float left. Now with that float, the images are inside this main section. The other thing I want to do now is give it a margin. So for those images, I'll say margin uh, 20 pixels. And I might have to use something less because I have to make sure that they fit within this main box. So I will give it a margin of, let's say, just 10. So now they fit. So I have my three images. They're a little bit too tall, so I'm also going to reduce the height of the images. So I'll make the height 140. So that's better. Now the other thing about the images, though, is how they're placed within the box itself. So this is where you guys are thinking about how you're using your floats and how you're using um, nesting. And the two are going to work together to get the layout that you want. So first off, I have the two boxes for my aside and my um, my aside and my main box here. So what I want to do is I want to actually have them next to each other. So um, the main box should actually be float left as well. So I'm going to float that left. And then I need to give it a little bit of space. So I'm going to create a margin of, let's say, 20 pixels. I'll actually give both a margin of 20 pixels. So they'll have 40 pixels in between. So now I have, it's getting a little bit closer to my wireframe, what I had in my wireframe. The other thing that's happening now is that the footer, if I give it a different color, I'll make it red, let's say. The footer is actually um, coming right after the header, and I want the footer to be below the main box and the aside. So what you have to do now is start thinking in terms of nesting. So this aside here and this div with the class of main, they're actually together on the page itself. I want them to be together. So what I would do is create another box, and this box would wrap around so the red line is going to designate another div that I create, and maybe the div for this box, you know, I'll call it, let's say, section. I'll call it section one. Let's say I have multiple sections. Eventually, there's more sections on the page. So I'm going to have another div called section one. So that div is going to wrap around the main and the side boxes here. So I'm going to create a new div, add a class equal to section one. And then section one here, let's say, the height has to be the height of the side and the main. So it has to actually be greater than that. So if I have a height of 399 for the side of the dot main class, maybe I'll make the height of the section um, for 20. And the width is going to be, basically the width is also going to be the combination of the width of the height, the main, plus the margins. So that width is going to be 232 plus 997. Um, let's just round it up. So, 1,000 plus, let's say, 240. That's 12,040 plus 20 pixels for margins on all sides. So, let me actually say 1,300 pixels. So, I'm going to give it a width of 1,300 pixels. And then, um, I'll make that background color. Um, yeah. And let's see, 
so it, it's starting to come together a little bit. Um, now the footer is where it should be, it's down below, but now I have to get this main section back up to the top. So let's see the main section. I'm going to make the, the actually section one, I'm going to make it a little bigger. And there you go. So I just didn't have enough space for my aside and my um, main section. So I can make that section one a little bit smaller now. So instead of 1500, maybe I'll go back to like 14. Just kind of guessing. But if I had all these measurements laid out, okay, so that's a little bit better. But you start to see now how that wireframe is being used for my code, right? So I have wireframe in Photoshop. And they have all these details laid out in the wireframe, so I can use my Photoshop um, wireframe as a guide. This red box, I probably use the shape tool to draw it, so now I have that as a guide, and I would start to put my measurements in here to lay out the page. So the important thing to think about, though, is with this wireframe is things that are next to each other, those are going to use floats. If you want to have two things that are coming from the let's say, the left to the right, use a float of left. So I use floats on the images, because they're next to each other, and I use floats on the div and the aside. Uh, when you want to have things that are together, you ensure you want those things to be together, then insert the nest things. So you nest the aside, the div, and this section one. And then if you want to ensure that something comes after um, something in the flow of HTML, that section one will actually uh, be used as the means to separate the header and the footer. So you have to have like a strategy in terms of how you're laying out the code to ensure everything comes together in the way that you want to. 